Playing audio or video from either local or remote is a big part of any app nowadays. So it's about time to check out the media element and how to implement that easily in your Xamarin Forms app. Let's do it. So first, let's have a quick look at what we're going to see in this video. We have here the end result. Um, so you can see a little header on the top as we have always and a little black box, which is actually the media element. So when I click this play button here, the video will start playing and you will see an episode of the Xamarin show about async stuff with my good friend, Brandon Minnick. Um, this is loaded from remotely from the Channel 9 uh, website actually, and it just starts playing automatically. So one of the things that we'll see is how to make this video player so compact because on iOS we will typically fill the whole screen. Uh, we will um, explore some APIs like the, the volume and how to show the playback, controls yes or no, um, aspect ratios, all that kind of stuff. Let's go check it out how to implement this for yourself. Then now let's see how we can actually implement that media element ourselves. So the first thing I did, this is just a file new Xamarin Forms project that you can see here running in Visual Studio for Android. Of course, this also works on Visual Studio for Windows. Um, you can see it here running on iOS, but it's also supported on Android and even UWP. So that is really, really cool. Um, now what I did, of course, on this project, I installed the Xamarin Community Toolkit. So you just go to your solution, um, right click on on the solution node, or you know, you can do it by project as long as you install it everywhere. You search for the Xamarin.community toolkit. At the time of recording, version 110 is the latest stable one, so make sure you check that one. Um, do add package and it will install that. Um, I already did that, but just so you know how to do it. Um, then whenever you did that, you want to import our special little namespace. So um, we have to do this XML namespace here, which is just a shortcut for a longer thing that it will import here, all the namespaces that you need. So I like to name this one XCT, but it can be anything. And here in the IntelliSense, just find this Xamarin.com schemas 2020 toolkit, and that has all the namespaces that you need. So that is pretty cool now, of course. If you've watched my videos, let's update that title first. Um, so we're going to make this the media element um, sample. Here we go and save it. And with hot reload, it will automatically update our UI in the running app, which is really, really cool. I also now have a video on .NET hot reload, which allows you to reload actual C sharp code while you're in a debug session. So I recommend you watching that. It should pop up on your screen or you can find it in the video description below. Um, but right now we just have XAML hot reload for Xamarin. And let me remove all these labels right here. And what we're going to do is add the media element. You can see because I imported the namespace, it will see it's in this XCT namespace right here. And I can just double click it and boom, we have a media element. Now, whenever I save this, I'm not sure. So you can see kind of like the iOS thing going on here. We have the, the volume thing, but it's not playing anything because I need to set a source, just like with images and that kind of stuff, you need to set a source. Let me just copy a URL here off screen from a little show that you might know on channel nine and also on YouTube. Um, it's called the Xamarin Show. And uh, let's save that. Oh, it comes up with an error. Um, that's interesting. I think it's this ampersand thing right here that looks suspicious so let's encode this one to an amp let's save it again and there we go here we see the examine show i think this one is about async command also something in the examine community toolkit with brandon minnick he is so very awesome friend of this um, show and channel as well so go check it out um so while that is playing let me actually see if i can can i pause it i can't pause it like this okay that's cool um so you don't get distracted by the playing video there and seeing two gerald's ah oh, it's geraldception um so you can see if i enter this source it starts playing automatically um which is which is pretty cool um so actually we have a property for that so if i say autoplay and I set it to false, obviously it's set to true by default. And if I set it to false, then it doesn't start playing automatically. So um, that is something that you might want to keep in mind. So um, also another thing that you might notice immediately is that it, you know, we have this, this frame and we're in a stack layout and you can see that the media element on iOS, um, I don't think this happens on Android or UWP. It takes up like the full space, um, which is, which was something that I found curious. 
uh, because this is not even like full screen, right? Because then I have to, to press this button. Uh, is it this one? Should I actually play it? So let's see if I auto play it. Um, I should be able to set it to full, full screen too. Oh, this is the aspect. So I guess the, the, the full screen controls might be pushed down here because of how I laid out this thing. Um, but actually I find it kind of funny that it, it took the whole layout. So what you want to do then is simply basically set a height uh, request just like you do on other any other um, examine elements. So when we do that, you can see it um, comes back to 200. Um, you can do the same thing with a width request, of course. Um, let's set it to, I don't know, 400 to get the um, aspect a little bit right. Uh, but the width request needs a special thing. It also needs like the horizontal options to be like center to actually crop the actual thing. Um, it should be more visible whenever we set this to 200 as well. You can see it um, gets off the edges. Um, so that is something you want to keep in mind if you want to, you know, make those videos a little bit more compact instead of filling a whole of your screen. And now you can also see the play button and we have these controls down here. You can see it picks up on how long the play time is here and we can actually set this to, to full screen. Um, so this is just how native iOS plays these videos. And that is um, pretty cool. Now talking about aspect, you can also influence that of course. So you can set it to fill, so it will fill the whole thing. Um, you can see it, but then it stretches our heads a little bit, so we look a little bit funny. Uh, but you can do all the aspects that you can do normally with a uh, image as well. Um, so there's a lot of other things that you can do, of course. You have the show playback controls, which you can set to true and false, but this is a special case. Um, I think this only works for UWP and Android, um, um, especially when you set it to the true case because iOS just has the thing, what you just see now, um, that it will show the controls, but it will hide after a certain period of time. Um, and there's no way, unless you maybe go hacking into the code, which is not allowed for uh, private APIs and put, publishing it to the store. Um, so there's no way to set it to true and always show the controls for iOS, at least not that we know of. Um, if there is, please contribute it to the Xamarin Community Toolkit. Um, other things, um, you can you can also set the source. We've already seen that. Of course, you can also do the uh, the volume. Um, you can get or set that. Um, there's also a thing called the state. Um, it doesn't show up in the IntelliSense oddly enough, which is kind of interesting. It's actually the current state. Um, it's also a read only uh, property and. You can see here, if we try to set it, what, what happens, but you can read the current state of this media element. So if it's buffering the video, if it's uh, closed the video opening, well, you can you can read it for yourself. So you can see what state this media element is in, uh, very handy as well. And I think the last one is also very interesting is the position. Um, so you can get the position of the video. Um, I think you can get and set this one. Um, so what this will do is it will actually set it to a time span. So the time span has to be inside of that video. Um, and so it has to be somewhere in the range of this, this you know, zero, zero seconds to 15 minutes here. And you can set the position or uh, you can, so you can make your own kind of controls. If you want to work around, like show the playback controls, yes or no, you can implement your own controls and set the position and the volume with these kinds of things. Um, of course, then there's other things like we can get the duration, we can uh, get all the, the vid things that are associated to the, the video, basically. Uh, duration is another one of those things. It seems that the read-only properties are not showing up in the IntelliSense here. I wonder if that's a bug with the toolkit or with um, um, something else. And the other very cool thing is keep screen on. Um, which is also a feature in Xamarin Essentials, uh, but you, it's built into this control as well. So whenever the video is playing, um, it can keep the screen on basically. It's by default set to false. So if you're playing the video and you do not interact with the screen, the screen will go off at a certain period of time that you've um, configured in your phone settings. But if you set it to keep screen on, it will keep the screen on while playing this video. Um, so you don't have actually that problem. 
Um, and that is basically how to get started with the media element. Maybe there is some more advanced scenarios that you want to see. Please let me know in the comments and I'll make a video for that. Um, I've seen a lot of issues in the toolkit about adding subtitles or a certain um, video format or live streaming even, uh, which are things that we definitely want to have. So if you have a little bit of experience with that, um, please have a look through those issues and maybe you can contribute something to the toolkit as well. Now, because I want to keep these videos short, there is a lot that I didn't show you. You can also play local files, you can play remote files, you can play audio. So again, let me know in the comments what there is that you'd like to see, and I will see if I can make a video for you. Um, also, a big shout out to Peter Foote, who has been working with the Xamarin Informs team and the Xamarin Community Toolkit team to get this merged because this is a big con community contributions by Peter. So um, again, from here, thank you so much for doing that. And uh, I hope we can take good care of this um, and make a lot of people happy with the media element. Um, as always, if you've liked this video, please click that little like button. So the thumbs up lights up and everyone will know in the YouTube algorithm that this is a video that they should check out. Also, if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to my channel and maybe if you have subscribed, but you also want to join this, um, join my membership and you can support me with a small fee. So, you know, it's all worthwhile and I can buy another cup of coffee. Speaking of memberships, I have a new member to thank who joined my channel as a member. Thank you, Ravi Chandra Nemani. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Um, thank you for supporting me for this video. This is sheer shout out and this video is dedicated now to you. Thank you so much for watching, keep coding, and until next time.